Ladies and gentlemen, step right up. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we are watching the Oscars 2020. I love the lighthouse. All right. Whatever, this is good enough. No, that was good. It's good. Yeah, I like that. Right. I didn't. I died inside doing it. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> now you know how I felt when I did the Now This Is Podcast. Okay, that was phenomenal. <laughs> That was great. No, yes. <laughs> yes. We're leaving this all in, right? Alrighty then. I was saying, um, I'm, I'm not fucking syncing up again. It so, sucks. So, yeah, yeah. We're, we're all here. I need, I need to take your cue. I, I, actually, I will say that, um, hello friends, this is Beyond the Silver Screen. We are bringing this podcast to you through Discord, so expect a lot of technical hiccups, and it's going to be a motherfucking mess. Other than that, yeah, we are very happy to be it's doing awful. this. I am forcing everybody else to do this at gunpoint. I just take your From cue. three different locations. All right, yeah, so we're here to talk about the best films of 2019 because almost nothing's come out this year. Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh, yeah, Sonic the Hedgehog and Birds Dude, of Jim Prey. Carrey. So. <laughs> Dr. Dr. Jim Robotnik, Carrey, best actor. Best actor. <laughs> Uh, Margot Robbie, best actress for Birds of Prey. <laughs> yeah, no. So we've decided to talk about the films of 2019, the Academy Awards, and just kind of like reflect on like what won, what we think should have won. The Lighthouse. What wasn't even nominated, <laughs> snubbed, stuff the like that. The Lighthouse. Yeah. Well, yeah. We're going to hear all like say The Lighthouse a lot in this one. But it's so, so good. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, so I feel like we just take it uh, category by category and... Yeah, I'll read off the nominees and who won, and we'll just kind of go at it. So, yeah, what do you guys think? That sounds... I think we should start with the lower categories first and work our way up. No, that sounds like an <laughs> awful replay. plan. And I think like the like the Academy Awards, let's cut out like cinematography, because who cares? And yeah. I mean... Cinematography has nothing to do with cinema. <laughs> nothing, nothing at all. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, think, I think like in this podcast... And cinematography we goes to... Birds of Prey. Costume design, because that's like the only one I care about. Hey, don't you sleep hey, costume, on costume, costume design. Costume design's that's pretty that, important. That category slaps, dude. Well, yeah, but it wasn't given to the lighthouse. <laughs> I do think the winner deserves <laughs> Yeah, I think more. the winner for that category no, actually, is very, 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 very well deserved. Right. Phenomenal costumes. <laughs> like, I have no qualms with that. Absolutely. No, I think Joker should have won for all <laughs> one costume. <laughs> that, yeah, that was some great costume design that they definitely just told everyone to bring their own clothes. Gamers, <laughs> rise! It was a solid costume, I will say. But yeah, um, actually, do you want to start with costume design? Because might as well. Sure. Yeah. All right. We're already there. All right. You all right sure. Um, best cost. Yep. Best costume design uh, nominated was the Irish. So what? Are you going to read it out? Yeah, he will. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm reading it out. Jeez, guys. Smooth. Oh, All right, God. so for best costume design, nominated was The Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, Joker, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Little Women was the winner. So, yeah. Yes. I agree That's with that. Okay, with all due respect, what the fuck is Joker doing on this list? Like, it's not a, it's not a bad <laughs> film. It, it's a good film, let's be honest. But, like, costume design... For yeah, the I don't red, know what like, they suit <laughs> of Joaquin Phoenix, like, get the fuck out. <laughs> yeah, that's a, a a questionable inclusion, I'll say. But, uh, I don't know. I, I, I guess maybe because it, it fits with the time as well. Like, the time is, of the setting. I guess, but Isn't I mean... Like, but people wear clothes because it's I not mean, the Stone Age? Like in... <laughs> It, it it basically looks like somebody raided my wardrobe because everybody's because wearing everybody a waistcoat. Because everybody is an incel. I understand. Mm -hmm. Understandable. Honestly, like um, <laughs> I'm trying to think of like anything that got snubbed here, but I nothing really comes to mind personally. Maybe Rocket Man. Rocket Man had some phenomenal costumes, especially like when they're. I will say. Wait, I will say. I, I think the two costumes that were on show in the lighthouse were very very good. <laughs> I'm <laughs> even not being sarcastic or ironic. I was gonna say, I think I think Oleg might know a, a thing that got snubbed. Yeah, he he brought it up. He's yeah. made his case. I happen to yes. But yeah, I would say I think Rocket Man is one 
film I think got snubbed because I do think the Elton John costumes oh, Rocket Man. very nice looked great. Does anybody here actually yeah. disagree with uh, the decision of the Academy giving the best costume design nope, Oscar this to was Little very... Women? No, nope, this was a great choice. I, no, Little yeah. Women had a did a great job, and um, the dresses were very meticulously researched to properly show the class of every single person who was wearing them throughout the film, and they all look great. So I have no mm-hmm. quarrels whatsoever. I agree with that. Yeah, I got nothing. All right, so let's move on to yeah, sounds good best to me. makeup and hairstyling. We have nominated Joker <laughs> again. No, I'm telling you, man, like they were totally pushing Joker to be the most nominated movie of the year. They really tried. Like some of these are like stretching it, but yeah. So we have Which Joker. Is odd because they fucking hated Joker. But is it just because it got so much? fan praise that they were like well best guess animated we have to. short film joker <laughs> joker <laughs> yeah, fucking lean into it mate i mean because it i love joker but her best documentary short but it fucking does now bitch <laughs> joker <laughs> we changed the rules it has to be a documentary it has to be less than 40 minutes and the only exception to this is it is joker 2019 <laughs> best original song joker <laughs> i mean actually though the original song? there's no Original well, song. No, I didn't say soundtrack. So. I, well, does that in, does that include soundtrack though? Because that's technically a song. No, original song does not include soundtrack. Is different than and also, soundtrack. Like yeah. I know that this varies from like band to band, but in general, song implies lyrics. Typically, what, what was that? I like hear. soundtrack doesn't imply it's lyrics, true. but a song typically does. Also, there are exceptions to that for sure. Can I uh, can I say something about best original song? Oh no! I mean, we're doing makeup and hairstyling, well, so do we want to yeah, keep let it? Let me do makeup and hairstyling. Fine. We we can go to song afterward if you want. Like fine, yeah. okay, I will wait. I will <laughs> All right, wait. so so yeah, best best makeup and hairstyling. We have Joker, Judy, Maleficent, Mistress of Evil, <laughs> uh, nineteen seventeen, and Bombshell, which also who won. was hairstyled so. in nineteen seventeen. <laughs> yeah, who wore makeup <laughs> on the battlefield in the trenches they all just had fucking undercuts like yeah, i don't want to sound ignorant but like it, I'm, I'm sure the people who are working Too on late. these movies did a lot of work but like what about the makeup in 1917 is that exceptional yeah nothing uh, dude a fucking the a fucking uh tree in a drought did all of the makeup and hair styling they just told the <laughs> actors to go rub their hair in the dirt and that was that was it <laughs> yeah i i think the makeup i haven't seen bombshell but i saw like the the trailer and i thought it looked good so yeah it looked fantastic it's, yeah. it's definitely following up in the like the vice vein of like a movie that for is all intents totally and purposes, not, yeah. is not good, but just, like, the makeup and hairstyling is good, and so it gets an Oscar anyways. I want to say, it's one of those movies where it's like, well, they looked... Ri-. It's one of them where it's uh, the only praise anybody ever gives it is, they looked exactly like the real person. It was, it was like did, I was looking so, I mean, at my mother. <laughs> they really did, they really did, but also... Well, they, they did, yeah. but yeah. again, <laughs> you know, how much praise is that? Yeah, I have nothing else to say about this category. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're, we're shooting through them fast. All right. Yeah, I mean, okay. we're, we're going to slow down once we hit, like, We'll slow know. down for the bigger ones. We're just getting through the wait, small wait, ones. I want to talk about the makeup and joke, though. Oh, my God, dude. The way Walking Phoenix is <laughs> okay, flawless. Fucking move on. <laughs> Beautiful. So, yeah, um, as as promised, Andrew, best original song. We have okay. I, can't, I Can't Let You Throw Yourself Away from Toy Story 4. I'm standing with you from Breakthrough, Into the Unknown from Frozen 2, Stand Up from Harriet, and the winner, I'm Gonna Love Me Again from Rocket Man. And I totally agree because it's about time Elton, John, and Bernie Sanders got an award. Yes. I don't <laughs> think I saw a single one of those movies. You missed out. There's, there's some... Yeah, there's two good ones. I mean, I mean good those were knowing how they released Rocket Man in my country of origin, I made a, like, a, a political statement out of not going to see that 40 minute short. <laughs> yeah, best yeah, best, best live player, action actually. short. I, I, re- I respect that decision on your behalf. Like, I really do. Like, go you for that one. I agree. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, I have a few. I have I have something I'd like to say about best original song, just in general, which is that this is a useless category. Like <laughs> well, this category how? shouldn't exist. Like okay, and and hear me out. Like I I love music. Like I play like four instruments and sing. Like I love and I listen to music all the time. I'm not good at it or anything, but like music is big in my life. But like, m- like, okay. So I'm gonna love me again. Like a lot of winners of this category is sung or like performed during the credits of the film, which means yeah. it's not even part of the movie. I mean, they still they like True. I understand so, where you're coming from, but they're still recognizing the work that somebody did for the film. That's true, but like in a day and age where people are talking about like, oh, we need to cut categories from the Oscars. In my opinion, best original song should be the first one to go because not only is it the category that least relates to the actual construction of the film. In fact, it most often is made completely separate from the film without really too much thought given to its impact in the movie itself, bar the, whether it's a musical or not. And then also, if you get rid of best original song, that saves you like twenty minutes of screen time <laughs> because that cuts off all the performances. Hey, hey, I don't know if you know this, but um, they don't really give a fuck. <laughs> they, did you? <laughs> the more screen time they take, the better. Did you see the thing where uh, Taika Waititi on Twitter jokingly was like, "You know, it's at least one good thing about twenty twenty is the Oscars for this year will be thirty minutes long," and then someone responded to it saying. Or four hours long because of the in memoriam section. <laughs> Jesus. Are we keeping that in there? <laughs> Dude, that's hilarious. I'm, I would leave it in there. I'm down. That, that, that is, is pretty good. That's, it is pretty funny. A little grim, but it's pretty funny. Okay. Well, beyond that, in terms of... In, considering the category does still exist against, against my, uh, my better prevenations, I, I definitely think swapping it out for like best lighting or something would make a lot more sense, but, but I yeah, digress. Yeah, it's weird. We don't have a lighting category. We don't have lighting. We don't have like choreography for stunts or musicals, but whatever. Um, best original song. Yeah, I agree with this pick. Um, I would like to throw out there that like usual, um, Frozen 2, they definitely did not pick the best song in that movie. They picked what is maybe the third best song in the movie show yourself and lost in the woods were much better what and about what about a, this i think they wanted to treat into the unknown as like the spiritual sequel so to speak to uh, let it go and they didn't it's, exactly succeed also, it's not as Einish, Einish, i want to throw out there that you said spen song and that is lost in the woods and you oh. left the theater for that scene <laughs> and that song is actually fantastic like i'm absolutely not kidding that song is actually really good i finally watched <laughs> it on disney plus the scene and yeah. i think it's, it's also pretty, far pretty, more it's like funny. expertly constructed than most of the songs here like i'm not trying to make frozen 2 seem like it was on its a game because most of the songs and all of the lyrics in that film are just the movie was bad. pretty solidly on its like C plus game throughout. Maybe B minus yeah, really game. Was. I do. Oh, but Lost sorry. in the Woods is a solid like probably something like fifteen plus chords, and it's actually a pretty complicated song, and it sounds wonderful. So yeah, w- would would say that that would that should have uh, been the been the given that or show yourself, which I like even more. Show yourself was actually pretty good. I, that was the <laughs> one bit where I'm like, am I feeling something in my heart? When I hear this song, I I think oh. that uh, R R Kelly really likes uh, the song "Show Yourself." Oh, God, beautiful! Yeah. yeah, and as I, I was trying to might, say, we might want to cut that a minute now because I keep cutting into while is somebody's the, speaking. Um, into this the is unknown. why we could never do this broadcast. This is why we <laughs> okay. could never do this podcast on like a live radio program. Um, okay, we're never gonna make it to a live radio program. That's a. We literally have like. Hey, three audience members six, facing one of our videos all, just because it. All six of them want to see us on the radio. Dude, we don't even, even have six. None of we them. We don't have six. Dude. Hey, we, the last video got like twenty views. We yeah, most of them six. watch until like the fifteenth minute at most. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, what true. I was trying to say is that um, coming back to the uh, best original song, I think "Into the Unknown" is definitely shat on too much, but I think that. That is not as much due to the song itself as it is due to the performance. And I in by no means mean to bash like uh Kristen Anderson Lopez, but I, I feel like that was one of the blander songs she's like put out. 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah I agree. I and agree. also lyrically, I think the song is just very like it's, bad. It's okay. Like, like it's bland. It's just very bl- it Yeah, the lyrics are just very blatant and expository, and also they like make no sense. She goes from saying I'm never going to go on an adventure to I want to go on an adventure over the course of literally well, two lines. it's supposed to be like a progression where it's like at first the person is like very reluctant and like suppressing the drive within themselves and then like through like throughout the Conceal, song they don't grow feel, into don't let them know. like wanting to chase that feeling and go on an adventure but I will absolutely agree that this was not the best way to do that. Yeah okay good we're in agreement. Nice. Alrighty. Also, stand up. Just want to throw it out there that both stand up and I can't let you throw yourself away are actually pretty solid tunes. I like. Would like, I, to, would like to say it. I like the uh, the Toy Story Four song. It was pretty funny. It was charming. Alrighty. Okay. Anything else? So, no, anything no, else? I, I haven't seen any of these movies, so <laughs> All right. can't yeah, really Alex weigh in. Prepared for this podcast meticulously. <laughs> He watched I'm not, I'm not watching movie. movies for the fucking to give Alex original credit, song he category. Most of the best picture nominees, so like he did work. <laughs> he did real work. Look, I'm 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 not I'm not going to waste my time watching stuff specifically for original sound. <laughs> See, Alex is proving my point here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Thank you, Alex. I, I even have a background in fucking music. I'm not wasting my time with that shit, man. So let's not yeah. waste our time on it. Do Casually insulting people effects? who worked hard on these songs. Fuck them. Let's move on. Well, no, yeah, I, have no, I have no quarrels with the song. No, I'm just, think, I'm just making fun of Alex that, like, because that's it's worthwhile. <laughs> save, save it for I the Grammys. I don't think the category is very important. No, I'm not. I'm yeah, not yeah, especially anybody Grammys, who's not honoring how a comedy. I just like it's a hobby to shit on everything Alex like stands for and believes in, and that's what I'm doing. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> Let's talk about the Grammys and um, Album of the Year. Okay, Album of the Year is a fucking shit show. You think the Oscars are bad? God <laughs> uh, let's Let's save it for another time, if you like. Alrighty. So, you guys want to talk about best visual effects? Oh, we're already move, moving up say. in the world? Do we want to I mean, do I'm just jumping around on okay, these. Okay, I mean, no, that's, that's cool want. by me. Because yeah. I also have stuff All to right, say. Yeah. Okay, best visual effects nominated. Avengers Endgame. Which should have been the, the winner. Irishman. Should have been the I agree. Uh, then the Irishman, <laughs> the Lion King, <laughs> which okay, good visual effects, but I don't want that movie to win an award. Uh, the Rise of Skywalker, and the winner, nineteen seventeen. Dude, they added that fucking CGI fog. That was fucking amazing. Yeah, mm. yeah I, I guess I am a little bit unclear on exactly what they did. <laughs> like best set design, sure. Like that set was pretty awesome, but visual effects i'm like it's not like they didn't have <laughs> visual effects it's not like the visual effects that were present were bad they were like they were good avengers endgame and even the motherfucking rise of skywalker which still had special effects not all of them were good but it had like actual visible special effects or like in this lineup like we're not grading whether or not it's a good movie which i agree 1917 is an amazing movie but we're, we're we're trying to establish whether or not the effects in the movie are the best. And 1917 in does nothing right. spectacular, nothing groundbreaking in that regard. And in that vein, Lion King, like while I do not like the movie, I think it's in my top 10 worst of the year. I do think the visual effects are fantastic. Like it looks really good. The movie looks great. So, and it's much more um, like technically complex than 1917 i would say well, visual effects wise. I, I don't know about that see my my rule for visual effects which again this is also only my rule so who really gives a damn but Skip. it's uh you know but it my rule is that if you if it's just like oh this looks s- somewhat realistic it, it, it's a little bit like like an artist who only draws a bunch of peaches, but they draw those peaches super fucking well, but they're still just a picture of fucking peaches. So who gives a damn? I'm sorry, I just want to clarify. So what is your point here exactly? Well, my point is that uh, Lion King, they managed to get you know pretty realistic effects, even by today's standards. But at the same time, you know, there's no real character put into them. There's no artist touch. 
it, it's just very bland and flavorless. So who really gives a damn? I mean, I feel bad because like the visual visual effects artists in Hollywood aren't treated that well. And I feel like a lot of times yeah. they don't get due notice. I think and the part well, of the reason fair, why this but... movie was so fucking horrifying is because the lions and other animals that were in the movie looked so realistic and so true to life that when they actually open their <laughs> mouth and say words, oh. it's like it's such an uncanny valley moment that it takes you out of the movie and makes you want to run for the hills. Yeah, speaking That's, of which, that, are, are you guys ready to watch uh, The I, Lady I and the like Tramp? To, no. <laughs> oh, fuck that. I'm never watching that. No, fuck that. Dude, shit. I already pre-ordered I, I would. I would like to throw out there, though, that um, the idea of making The Lion King, where the animals are so realistic that they can't express emotion, is unfathomably stupid. Like, I... I think Dis- Disney like Disney that, thinks it's also, pretty smart considering how much they made. But and they made a shit ton. They made a, they they made a fucking shit ton. It's technically the highest grossing animated film of all time, which we can get into that. What, what about now, Trolls we're World We're not going to get into that because that would be a whole tangent. But I would like to like throw out there that like it's not the visual <laughs> effects artist's fault that they were told to do something that wasn't a good idea if they did a great job at it. Right. Yeah, no. Mm-hmm. So, I, I can confirm as a visual effects artist if somebody's paying me to make something and they go, hey, include this really shitty piece of crap. I'll go, okay. <laughs> if you say <Yeah>. so. <laughs> You're paying so me. So I like to throw that. And yeah, then, exactly. I'm not going to argue that 1917 should have won the category. Although uh, one thing I would like to say is that the best visual effects are the ones that you can't tell are visual effects. Mm-hmm. So if you sit through the entirety of 1917 and like don't notice there's visual effects through it, that means that the visual effects artist did such a good job that you can't tell where the visual effects are. Or, or um, there's no visual effects. I mean, there probably there's no were visual, visual effects. effects. And honestly, it I means can't tell, one of the two. <laughs> I can't. I can't tell you which of the two it is, but I think that is like something worth noting. Is that like. That's that's the biggest problem with being a visual effects artist is that if you do your job really really well, no one knows you did a job in the first place. Okay, even that's given, true, so, like, okay, maybe sorry. maybe we should be giving 1917 a bit more of a benefit of the doubt in that regard. Like, but like, maybe not saying it should win, but like we should give it that kind of benefit. Yeah, of I will doubt. say that there totally well, should be visual effects there because I don't think the Academy is exactly insane despite them not including the lighthouse in most of the major categories i still think there is some merit to i mean they don't like horror movies which i guess they might think the lighthouse is a horror movie that's also why i think they didn't nominate cats for best visual effects because they just don't like horror movies but yeah no, the visual yeah. the visual effects in cats were phenomenal and groundbreaking in how shit they were <laughs> <laughs> they definitely broke something. <laughs> my eyes. They broke my eyes. <laughs> my spirit. My retinas. First, I break your spirit. Alrighty. Do we have more to say on best visual effects? I'm good. I think Cass should have won. I don't. I truly don't. <laughs> <laughs> I okay. disagree on many levels. I, I still personally so... think that... Um, Avengers Endgame should have taken the cake. I don't know whether or not like Avengers Endgame not taking the cake was due to 1917 having amazing visual effects that we just didn't notice because of how amazing they were, or if there is a bias against like popcorn comic book films in general. But I do think like the visual effects in Avengers Endgame were awesome, even though like some people may not consider it cinema, but whatever. We're specifically grading visual effects. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I do Bruce love Banner, the phrasing of that. Bruce Banner Hulk looks great, I thought. And yeah. even Thanos though some people think fantastic. it's not cinema. So, you know. Yeah. yeah. Alex, were you going to say something? Yeah, I was just saying I, I love the phrasing that Oleg used, which is even though some people I say it's not think cinema. I there's merit to that thought. I was just pointing out to a potential member of the audience that we're specifically talking about best visual effects where your bias is against like not liking art house movies or not liking popcorn flicks should be like left aside as you specifically like yeah. look at the stuff that is being discussed which is the visual effects. Yeah, no, that's I would also fair. think I'd like to point out like in fairness that visual effects does tend to be the one category 
where historically, like if you look at especially the last couple decades, visual effects is the category where the Academy like is able to put aside its bias and actually recognize big blockbuster cinema. They didn't do it this year, and I agree. I think they probably should have. But like historically speaking, this category is a bit better about it than the rest of them. Mm-hmm. So there's that. It's only the biggest pop culture like you know thing of the past. Well, that's decade. also not something that is being great, admittedly. I know. I just feel like you know maybe something. It was not on visual on effects. But yeah. Um. All right. Next up, Einish. What is it? All righty. Uh. Next up, do we want to production design? We're calling the shots, Chief. Production design. Yeah, I was going to say I don't know why you picked this order to go through it. I'm just There's yeah. I'm on like the on the web page. There is an order. I'm just like. I mean, I'm okay with production design. All right. Okay. Okay. So production design, we have. You're also picking all the shit. I really don't give a damn about. Well, we said we wanted to build up to like you know. Yeah, no, because we're definitely going to have something to say about the big ones. We could sprinkle one interesting point in. (laughs) Just give them a little something to stay stay for. Production design, we have Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which won. Uh, but also nominated was The Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, 1917, and Parasite. So, Can I go first here? Sure. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, so, personally, I think that Best Production Design was the only category of the Oscars this year in which I agreed with all the nominations. Um, for me, this was, for me, and I'm absolutely being 100% serious when I say this, this was, for me, probably one of the most interesting categories this year, specifically because I would have actually been happy with most, if and not all of these films, winning. They didn't nominate um, Cats. I, fuck you. It really I did take me to hell, really so props to the production designers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Once Upon a Time in Hollywood was awesome. The fact that it, like, I saw Once Upon a Time in Hollywood on 35 millimeter film and it literally felt like i was watching a movie made in 1969 so and a lot of that was because they shut down parts of los angeles and converted them entirely into the past which was really cool the irishman was pretty good um jojo rabbit did a great job with the passing of time and showing the destruction in the city 1917's production design in my opinion, best aspect of the entire film. Absolutely incredible. Parasite had probably the best set of the whole year in the house. That house was amazing. So I actually thought this category was really, really interesting, and I would have been happy with any of these except probably The Irishman. Yeah, I agree with that. (laughs) Yeah, I think Andrew kind of made my point for me here. I will just add that while I think that all of the nominees for this category are very strong, I very much agree with the decision to select once upon a time in hollywood as the winner for best production design because where um irishman jojo rabbit like even 1917 in parasite like recreate the um setting that they want the movie to be like contained within very well once upon a time in hollywood is the only movie that really feels like it's set in the era that it's trying to recreate which is like the Hollywood of uh, uh, the Manson era. It was yeah. 1969, I think. Yeah, because like uh, yeah. even even 1917, which comes very close, I never, I was never sitting there and truly believing that like I was watching a documentary about World War One with actual footage. But once upon a time in Hollywood, except for like the over the top grotesque nature of the movie, might as well be a documentary about Hollywood at the time. Yeah. I, I I don't know about that. I think 1917 was pretty true to uh, pretty true to form. Like I, I went back and uh, afterwards I watched uh, what is it called? It's the one that uh, Jackson did. You know Peter Jackson. Uh, the Hobbit. Yeah, yeah. They um, shall not grow old. They shall not be forgotten. <laughs> yes. Oh, Fantastic. they shall not grow old. That's it. Really uh, good. Yeah. Well, and I was just thinking like the 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 sets and like character design. Or, well costume designs makeup and stuff they they do look very like i couldn't really spot any clear differences though again i'm not a expert on i World feel War like 1917 here. unlike once upon a time in hollywood just felt a little too clean a little too technically brilliant for me 
that it, it felt lost... kind of like a set. Yeah, the whole exactly. Time, it kind of I lost thought. the grit of reality that you especially want to communicate with a war movie. Maybe uh, I don't know. It's it's an interesting question for sure. I'll say. 